Hello, how you doing, Facebook, YouTube? Well, Mac is finna go. <laughs> I'm finna go somewhere that, you know, I'm finna really get to spiritual nitty gritty. I think I can say that. I'm finna get to the spiritual nitty gritty about the reality of what's going on in this world concerning the kingdom and concerning the kingdom of God. Now, I'm finna really get all ugly for a lot of people or a lot of Christian people. All that's all about uh, money. <laughs> yeah, money, 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 money. Huh. Well, here's the thing. I want to explain first. Thing first, I want to explain this reality that you know people, Christians, are not investigating quite carefully, and they should investigate carefully. You know, if they want to be in right standings and right relationship with God, um, about money. Now it says that you know, it, the scripture says you know you can serve you you only can serve two masters you know either either you serve god or mammon hmm mammon who's 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 mammon what does mammon mean i mean what's this mammon all about i wonder if anybody ever considered in researching mammon you know because i don't want to be a part Whatever this mammon is, I don't want to serve it. <laughs> I don't want to serve this uh, this mammon, you know, uh, whatever it is or whoever it is. I don't want nothing to do with that mammon. No, oh, no, no, no. Well, you can, you know, if you have a computer, go to Google and type in mammon and it will tell you what it's all about but I might as well you know interrupt the surprise information of what it's all about you know because I already went to Google and checked it out um, it's all about wealth yes 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 it's all about wealth Money, yeah, you know that money making thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but mm, that's uh, Mac. I think you interpret. You're not interpreting the scriptures carefully, Mac. Uh, you gotta look carefully now. You know you can. You know it, we supposed to use money as for the ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now. I think you need to examine uh, Matthew 6 carefully and keep reading down there. Just keep reading down there. You know, uh, how God is telling you that he will provide whatever we need, you know, in life, you know. Now, and then, it, you know, when you read down there, that he, you know, he showed that, you know, I clothe the grass, I take care of the animals. Why can I not take care of you? Now, and he didn't mention money at all. But guess what? And guess what he said in that, and keep reading down from there. Don't do what the Gentile, don't seek what the Gentiles seek. Hmm. What does the Gentile seek? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Um, they do seek money. <laughs> oh yeah, I see a lot of people seeking money. Yeah, a lot of people seeking money. <laughs> and because money gives them things. Mm -hmm. Now watch this, what Jesus say that, oh, oh, a lot of Christians love the quote with the anointing power of God. Uh, Matthew 6:33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Wait a minute. Didn't mention money. 
oh, wait a minute. We're supposed to like, at, we money is part of the things. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, money is a part of the things that, you know, that we're so, what's gonna be added to us. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Well, I, not exactly. <laughs> well, Mac, well, well, Mac, what are you talking about not exactly? Well, here's the thing about the thing that, you know, Christians and worldly people, certain lukewarm Christians and worldly people are not put, uh, paying attention to overall factor, the overall factor that you're ignoring, you know? The thing is, well, here it is. You know, you ever read uh, Revelations uh, 17 that talks about, you know, Mystery Babylon? Ah, uh, you ever took a good look at that scripture I mean those two chapters about it's the uh, 17 and 18 oh you need to look at those things quite carefully because you know the thing is they uh, describe Babylon concerning the merchandise of the earth hmm merchandise of the earth hmm that, you know, people are paying money for. <laughs> yeah, the merchandise of the earth that people are paying money for. And now they're paying money for this merchandise. And all of a sudden, if you start, keep reading, you'll read this prophecy that it showed the rich people throwing something away <laughs> because it became this uh, the, the money be it looks like the money became worthless for some apparent reason how did the money became worthless what what made money worthless <laughs> oh what made money worthless well if you read a study you know uh, the 17th and the 16th of Revelations, you kind of notice that the <clears throat> the Lamb of God, they, the uh, system made war against the Lamb of God, the King, Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and the Lamb overcome them some kind of way. <laughs> that, you know, it overcome them, and all of a sudden, you know, the, uh, the ten horns people uh, uh, they, 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 that kingdom, you know, start looking at Babylon, the I mean, looking at the whore, as you know, they 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 start hating the whore, cause the whore is now worthless. The whore doesn't have much worth, you know. So they were like, they hate the whore. They started burning. The, the, they read that they, you know, you know, they start burning the whore. Ha ha ha. Uh, yeah, because the whore all of a sudden got worthless some kind of reason. I don't know. if Could it be those Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lamb of God, they that, you know, overcome it, you know, did something to make their uh, money worthless? Mm, could it be something they did something to, you know, destroy Babylon? But... Who is Babylon? Who is her? You know, who is her? You know? Well, I heard a prophecy that Jesus said that, you know, that, you know, when, uh, uh, when, when John left, John the Baptist left, it said the kingdom of heaven suffer with violence and the violent take it by force. Hmm saw a prophecy and it, and it reads it as a prophecy that the kingdom of heaven suffered with violence and the violent took it by force hmm I wonder you know uh, 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 something is going to happen very soon that you know the kingdom of heaven will suffer with violence and start taking things because you know it's taking it by force for some kind of apparent reason 
is something like that is going to happen soon because it's and then Paul talks about the it's in uh, Romans uh, 11 talking about the the fullness the fullness the the fullness of time the time of the Gentiles <laughs> he talks about the time of the Gentiles you know a period of the Gentiles are going to do something mm, some Gentiles are going to do some at a particular time that's going to do something great upon the earth hmm I wonder what that's talking about you know and if you you know keep reading you know Romans 11 and 12 and 13 and start reading all the way to the 16 it's quite interesting information you start hearing that's showing a procedure of something that's going to take place you know very soon you know but I'll let you investigate because it's for you to know the truth it's for you to seek out God's Word and see something I can give you a hint I can you know uh, tell you this and tell you that but nah I, I would like you to check it out and examine for yourself but here's the thing I want to talk about the, what what Jesus is saying that people are not is not registering in uh, Matthew 6 33 it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you now and then it says you know don't do what the Gentiles do now how will we ter interpret this saying you know I mean how will we interpret it now here's a way of interpreting you know to learn the ideal of God you know it's one thing of you know here's the thing about God you need to understand it's one thing God is called Jehovah Jireh <laughs> and Jehovah Jireh means God God is the provider <laughs> let me see here God, the absolute, the only, the only one providing. Mm, that's what it really, Jehovah Jireh means. It doesn't mean there, I don't see you, I don't see nobody else, but it says God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Okay, where is you? Where is you in this vicinity, in this scripture? I don't see your I don't see nobody else on there, you know? Hmm. And you know it's funny, you know, how God leads this pattern all through human history, you know, kind of with the Jews, you know. I mean the children of Israel, you know, I want to get Pacific, uh specific. And uh the thing is it everything that uh the children of Israel have got, you know, provided for you concerning the um Egypt you know Egypt was giving them gold was courtesy of the plagues the ten plagues of God you know they got the gold from you know Egypt you know and and in in the wilderness God provided them manna provided them water he was the ultimate provider in them in the wilderness so hmm I wonder what when now Jesus says the Son of God is he if he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I wonder if I'm supposed to play a role of you know going to work and you know doing this and doing that and doing this. Mm, I wonder. Hmm. But yet, you know, in Jewish his in, in Jewish history. You know, it talks about a day of rest, you know, the Sabbath day that, you know, that the rest day will come to sabbatical, you know, the Jubilee, you know, they talk about Jubilee, Jubilee. The Jubilee means that no one will work. You know, it's a prophecy that no one will work very soon. Isn't check, check, check the scriptures, check, you know, Leviticus it says no one will work anymore. And it's going to be a point in time that the Jews are waiting for, you know, that, you know, the um, Jubilee that no one will work anymore. But I wonder if that is the reality that us Christians are supposed to look at Jesus, God as our provider and we're not supposed to be working jobs. We're supposed to be depending on him. All right.
cool. I'll be the glory here forever. Jesus' name, amen.